All right, let's take a look at the example questions for mid-segment theorem. Recall that the mid-segment theorem tells us that if we have a triangle and we mark the midpoints of the two sides of that triangle and of the bottom, that a line drawn between the two sides will be parallel to the base. So it's parallel to this and that it is equal to one half of the base. So it's congruent with each of these two sides down here. That's the mid-segment theorem. So let's see how it applies to the example questions here. If we take a look at example A, it says that the vertices of triangle LMN are, L is uh, 0 0.45, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. M is negative 2, negative 7 and n is negative 8, positive 3. So if we connect those lines, there we go, then we get a triangle. It says graph the triangle, plot the midpoints, and draw the mid-segments. So here we have our triangle graphed, um, and I went ahead and marked the three points here, and then it says to plot the midpoints and draw the mid-segments. So we need to find the midpoint of each of these lines. So if we start with line LN, line segment LN, then it runs from negative 8 on one x-coordinate to 4 on the other x-coordinate. So what we need to do is find the midpoint of that. So we take our negative 8, add it to our 4, and divide by 2 to find our midpoint for the x. And then we'll find our midpoint for the y, which goes from 3 to 5. So we'll add 3 to 5 and divide by 2. And those of you who are kind of quick here are going to note that that's really finding the average of those two points, right? When you add uh, a set of things together and divide by the members of the set, you find the average. And that's really what we're doing, is finding the average x and the average y. So we have negative 8 plus 4, we get neg or negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. So our x-coordinate of the midpoint is going to be negative 2. And our y-coordinate is going to be 5 plus 3, that's 8, divided by 2 is 4. So the midpoint of LN is going to be negative 2 and 4, right about there. And then if we find the midpoint of LM, so we have line LM, midpoint of that one is going to be 4 plus negative 2 divided by 2, and 5 plus negative 7 divided by 2. So we'll have 6 over 2, that's 3. And negative 2 over 2, that's negative 1. So we have 3. Ooh, that didn't work. I must have done something backwards. 5 and negative 7 is negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. That's right. And then, oh, 4 plus negative 2 is 2 divided by 2 is 1. Sorry, calculated that one wrong. There we go. So 1, negative 1 right there. That looks better. And then finally for MN, we have negative 2, negative 8 over 2. And we have negative 7, negative 3 over 2. Negative 2, negative 8 is 10. Divided by 2 is negative 5. And negative 7 minus 3 is negative 10, divided by 2 is negative 5. So that one is at negative 5, negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. Looks like I screwed something else up again. Let's see, what did I do wrong here? Negative 2 minus 8. Negative 10, divided by 2 is negative 5. Negative 7 minus 3. Oh, negative 7 plus 3. That one's positive. There we go. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Sheesh, not on the ball this morning. There we go. So there's our three midpoints, and that means that these three lines right here represent the mid-segments. There we go. All right, example B. Example B says mark all the congruent segments on triangle ABC with midpoints D, E, and F. So here's our triangle ABC, and here are our midpoints D, E, and F. 
Now recall that the midpoint theorem tells us that if we mark the mid-segment, that it's going to be congruent with half of the length of the opposite side. So this DF is congruent with AE. DF is congruent to AE. And that that's going to be the same on each of the mid-segments we draw. So if we then took this triangle and sort of rotated it to the left here, I have a smaller version of it down here. If I take this triangle and I rotate it to the left, you can see that now, if we were to draw the mid-segment here between F and E, that this line would be congruent with BD and DA. So this one here, let's do that one in blue, FE is congruent with BD and DA, one hash each. And then if we were to rotate that one again, down here, rotate it down to the other side, then this becomes our new mid-segment. Let's do that one in green. Then DE becomes our new mid-segment, and it would be congruent, three sides, with BF and FC. So really, once we've, once we've drawn all three mid-segments, we have a bunch of congruent triangles. We have BDF, which is congruent BDF, here we go, get it on top. BDF is going to be congruent as a triangle with any of these other triangles. They're all going to be the same because we've sort of divided that triangle into individual equal parts and then just drawn lines between them. Mm -hmm.